Hello audience. Now in this video I'm going to make and install the backrest slash armrests on this. Now to me the backrest is the most important and critical part of the interior on these cars for a few reasons. One, it's the first thing you see when you walk up to the car. Two, it covers almost half the interior space. And three, it takes by far more time and effort to install this than any other component in the interior. So, let's get started. One thing I forgot to mention when I was putting together the bottom cushion is if you look on the original upholstery, you can kind of see a few areas where you can see the original grain of the material. And surprisingly, I was able to find a pretty close match to it. The backing is obviously different, but it looks the same from the front. So, this is what I've been using for the interior. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with these cars, the backrest is made of upright pleats and wraps all the way around to the sides. It goes all the way to the door posts. Even though some people refer to the armrests like they're separate pieces, they're actually, it's actually all one piece from one door post to the other. And it is somewhat tricky to make, especially this transition right here around the corners. Now, it's not as difficult to make as it looks, but still it is kind of tricky. Now what some people do to avoid this is they just make it in three separate pieces. They make the armrests and then do the backrest separately, which is kind of the way this was done before. And making it in one piece like it was originally it is somewhat more tricky and takes more work, but visually it's worth it when it's done. Because it really gives it that old-fashioned decorative look that everyone loves. So to start with... I already made a set of pleats for the backrest. Now I'm going to add the padding to this and then nail this down roughly where it should be and then we'll start figuring out the corners, how to make those. Now with the backrest setting more or less where it will be, I took a piece of scrap material and cut the side out of it to kind of match this. And then I nailed it on under tension about like the way it would be when installed permanently. And it looked pretty good. So then I cut out another piece to match that more or less. Nailed that on, got it to where it looked okay. Then I stitched these two pieces together and nailed them on together. And it looked pretty good. It did take some adjusting, but I got it to where it looked okay. So then I took them apart again, and now I'm going to take these and use them as patterns for cutting out the real ones. Also, I made the armrest, which is just more pleats sewn together. So now, like I said, I'm going to make copies of these patterns and then take this off and stitch it all together. Now, I'm only going to do one side at a time, just in case I made any mistakes that I don't see. I won't have to correct them twice. And if all this works out, we'll take these patterns and compare them to the other side, see if they fit, and do it all over again.
that side is looking pretty good, so we're going to go with it. And I've been trying out the patterns on this side, and they seem to fit pretty decent. So I'm just going to copy these again for this side. It is worth checking to see if both sides are symmetrical before you start making it, because it's surprising how many of these bodies are not. Now we're getting ready to nail the backrest on for good. And on the sides I've added a piece of trim panel to keep the padding from falling inside the body. I don't know how these were done originally, but this is how I do them, and they work pretty good. And because I forgot to show you earlier, this is the backrest frame. Most of it I reused. This piece down here, I made a new one, just because it was easier than removing all the nails and staples that were in it. And I got the backrest springs secured about halfway between the bottom cushion and the top of the body. And I made these little steel clamps to hold it in. So, it's ready to go. Yeah, this is one thing I normally do with these cars, is I add a piece of material between the spring and the back of the body so that I can set padding on top of here, so I can pad the backrest to have more of a curve to it instead of just a sharp turn and then straight back. Now that I got it nailed in place more or less where it should be, now we're going to start figuring out where the buttons go and begin installing those. And then I'll start nailing it down for good. Now normally installing these, I nail it to the bottom and then to the top. And I don't know why this is, but no matter how tight I get it up here, it always ends up being really loose down here. Which is not really a problem, I can just remove these nails and tighten it up. I just find that interesting. That's better. Well, I ordered five pounds of cotton for this job, and it's used up just about all of that exactly. Now, when installing these backrests, especially up top around the corners around here, it's really important to understand the upholstery techniques that were used back then. Now, if you're familiar with cars from pretty much the late 20s and newer, you're probably used to the idea of any kind of upholstery is all sewn together and any padding that's done is done before installation and then it's just kind of wrapped around whatever it's supposed to be and then nailed on. This is kind of as far in the opposite direction as it gets. Now this is somewhat of a carryover from the days of diamond tufting which goes back at least to the 18th century and what's important about that is it predates the sewing machine so any patterns you wanted had to be folded in and padded in just so while it was being assembled. 
and then the buttons and careful padding was what held the pattern in it. So installing it was the job back then. Now that technique was pretty much carried over even into the early Model T's, like 1909-1910. This technique is kind of a transition from then. The design has already been sewn into it with a sewing machine. The buttons, even though they're technically holding the padding, they're arguably more for looks than anything else, but installing it is still the old-fashioned style. It, how it looks depends greatly on how you pad it, and that's especially the case with these corner pieces here. Now, for example, this piece right here, it's kind of loose and baggy because there's just nothing behind it. So the thing to do is to just pad it. And it just keeps filling this with cotton until it starts to take shape. And the way I do it is I put a little of it in at a time and then just pull it tight, kind of the way it's the way it would be when installed. And see how it looks. If there's any low spots or pad that in, or if it's uneven, I do something about that. And when I get it looking okay, I'll nail it down and then walk around and look at it from different angles and see how it looks. And usually takes a few tries of that before it looks okay. Then we move on to the next one, which is this. We've got to pad this one and make sure it sits against this one pretty evenly and pretty much do that all the way down the armrest. Not so much on here, but on top it does need to be padded because, as you've seen, the tack strip is uneven. And the big thing to keep in mind about this technique is it takes a lot of time. you got to be really patient. Now the other side, it took me all day to do that. And I expect it to take all day to do this side too. It is a lot of work and it does take a lot of patience, but it really makes a difference when it's finished. Now I'm attaching this with 5 16 inch staples because they hold but they're really easy to pry out so it makes it easy to adjust. These would probably rattle loose though during driving so if this were the front seat of a touring car or something like that I'd probably add a few tacks all around it to hold it permanently. But with this car the top nails down around here so the nails going through all that will be more than enough to hold the seat permanently. So I'm just going to leave it. Now most of these cars, if not all of them, had another row of buttons near the bottom of it, right about where the bottom cushion sets. And when the bottom cushion's installed, you can't really see them. Now, most people don't bother to install them, like I did. Reason being, like I said, once the bottom cushion is installed, you don't really see it. If you put them in just a little bit too high, they're going to look funny. And they don't really seem to do anything anyway. And it's finished, which means the interior is finished now. Now there's still a few little details to sort out on this, but for all practical purposes the rough work is done. So we're really getting near the end of this project. The only thing left to do now is the top, and 
you know the routine. You'll see it in another video. So, thank you very much for watching.